forgives all our sins, his mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. Shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may be surely there fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. lesson from Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and say to his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 51. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not the Holy Spirit from me. O give me the comfort of your help again. Then shall I teach your ways unto the wicked. And sinners shall return unto you. Deliver me from blood guilt, O God, the God of my salvation. And my tongue shall sing your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show what kind of death he was going to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. O oh Lord, now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Welcome to this fifth Sunday in the season of Lent. And on this day, I would like to uh, use as my biblical text our first Bible reading today from the prophet Jeremiah, and since we just heard something else, let me just read that again for you so that we can be very focused on that uh, as I'll be preaching from it. Jeremiah says, for God, to his people, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand, to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant, which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Because God is, as some religious uh, philosophers and theologians have said, the eternal now present to every moment. There's a, there's a theological or philosophical idea you can get lost in. Please don't. I'm just starting the sermon. I uh, don't want you to go off and never come back. But because God is the eternal now, we, we, there are so many things that are good and right and important and needful and helpful that we could say about every moment, about the past or about the present or, or about the future. There are important things to say in each of those places, in each of those ways or regards. And today, I want to focus particularly on uh, the future. If we had a sermon title today, it might be Facing Forward in Faith. 
That's nice and alliterative. I should have written that down. Facing forward in faith. Because today's passage begins with these words. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord. And then a little bit later, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days. And we realize that as important as the past is in some ways, as important as the present is in some ways, our faith journey is incomplete if we are not rightly oriented, geared, focused, grounded with face forward to God's future. And that is what I would have you consider today and remember as you leave this house of worship in a little bit. A future orientation. Yes, and already Christ has come. And yes, too, a not yet, nonetheless, in those days. The days are coming, says the Lord. And what a beautiful promise and vision God gives us for the days ahead. It's what we really want and what we really need. Here again, how his prophet says that vision and that promise, I will put my law within them and I will write it upon their hearts. God is promising to do something with our hearts, something within us, where things come from, where it matters. And this is his beautiful vision and promise of what we really want and really need, a relationship just that close, just that deep, just that fruitful. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord. I love this. I love this. It, it, there will come a day, finally, and I look forward to it. And I have hope because of it. A day beyond the past days, when, a day beyond the day when you have to say, Ted, know the Lord. <laughs> Ted, remember his way. For God promises he will bring me to a place in those days when it will be written in my heart. And a right spirit will be within me. And this is for everyone. This is for everyone. From the least of these, Jeremiah says, to the greatest. I, I love that line. You, you know, I love Christianity because it has room for knuckleheads. <laughs> There's a place for us ragamuffins here. The sinner has a home with this God. All are promised this beautiful vision, this vision that he will give after those days. The days are coming, he says. And, and we know that, that that's what we really want and really need because we know how broken our past is. You know, there are things that we should always remember. In fact, th th there, uh, there's a central act of the Christian faith in life that we do every Sunday that we gather as a communion of saints in a community of faith, the Eucharist, where we do this in remembrance of Him. There are things that we will never forget. We should never forget from the past what God has done for us in Christ, that this is his body and this is his blood, and lo, I am with you. Always. And yet, and yet, there are things that we need to forget, too, about the past. For how can this beautiful vision and promise be realized? He says, 
I promise that I will do this. The days are coming the way is the way the passage started. But hear how the passage ends. The passage ends with how it will come to be. He says, for. That's a key word. For. This is how it's going to happen. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. You know, I have dealt with forgiveness my whole life, certainly as a pastor, as a priest of the church. I have struggled for myself and with uh, those that I'm in relationship with in the life of the church about forgiveness, and forgiveness can be a very challenging thing. And, and people say, well, how, how do I do it? How is it done? I've, I've had many conversations about that, and I've I've heard what others say, and I've said some things. And, and one of the things that we say to each other is because, because people say, well, well, Father Ted, you know, I can never forget what he did to me. And oftentimes we will say, well, we're not asking you to forget. You're, you're right, you'll never forget. But there's still there's ways to forgive. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever said that or somebody told you that? You, you don't have to forget. Don't, you don't expect to forget, but, but you can still forgive. And, and, and we've said it so many times, and I've said it so many times, that I, I'm not going to stand here today and say that that is, is entirely wrong. That's wrong. I don't think I can say that to you, honestly. But I also don't think I can stand here today and say to you that I believe that that's entirely right. How will this be? How will we receive that which is promised to come after these broken days? You know, it's, it's fascinating to me how, how relevant the Bible continues to be thousands of years later. It is so true to life. He says, the covenant that I made with your fathers that they broke our past is full of brokenness, is it not? Even in the things that were meant to be good, in the covenant that I made with them, but they broke it. Our past is filled with brokenness. I, this is the third time now I've said it today, but it was before the 8 o'clock service this morning. J.D. and I were standing before the service talking about all kinds of things, the life of the church as we always do before we went in to the service. And we were, <laughs> we were talking about bishops in our life who have disappointed us in the past. <laughs> it, was, it was not hard to think of a few. <laughs> <laughs> Our past is full of brokenness. Our covenant, even our covenant relationships, our marriages, our church life. How? How can we receive that which is promised. God says, this is how I will do it. I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. You know, uh, Deacon Joyce is um, many things in our midst. And one of the things is she's the, she's the tip of our pastoral care spear. And she does a lot of counseling in that role. And, and one of the uh, main counseling that she does is marriage counseling. And I, I would encourage you, if you need a tune-up or um, if you need more than a tune-up to come to Joyce or to e either any of us, J.D. or myself, and we would be glad to, to counsel with you. But she's very good at it. And one day, not that long ago, she was talking to me about um, a particular couple she was counseling with. And, and she, said, she said, for there to be a successful marriage, a husband and a wife, quote, must keep short account. We must keep short accounts. Someone has to forget that we may forgive. In order to forgive, someone must forget. St. Paul, in his deep desire to live, in a new way, a way that reflected 
the power of Jesus Christ's resurrection, the power of new life, writes in his letter to the Philippians that um, in speaking of that, living in that new power, he says, not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect. Our past is full of brokenness, as is our present. He says, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature be thus minded. It is only the spiritually immature among us, me and you included at some point or another, it is only the spiritual immature who imagine that we will ever be able to receive the promised life in Christ which we really want and really need if our fundamental orientation remains in our broken past where I have been inadequate for you and you have been inadequate for me and we have hurt each other and sinned against one another before God. One thing I can tell you, Paul says, to live in the power of resurrection, new life, I've got to forget the past and press on for the future. Facing forward in faith. C.S. Lewis does, uh, captures this truth really well in his book, The Great Divorce, in which every Friday in his imagined supposal vision that he turns into a book. Every Friday the bus comes to the edge of heaven from hell and a group gets off and are met by folks who would lead them into heaven. And every time there's an encounter and exchange and, <laughs> and the ones that don't want to go on get back on the bus and go back to hell. And oftentimes, it's because they can't leave behind the inadequacies and the brokennesses and the sins of the past. They say, is my husband here? Oh, yes, he's there. He's waiting for you in, up in the high country. Why is he here? <laughs> I don't want to go if he's here. Come on, you'll see. Trust me. It'll be all right. I don't know about that. You, I, those last years together, boy, they were terrible. You can't believe what he did. Is my old boss here? Is my son here? Is he still acting the way he was acting? And because they can't forget and let forgiveness be, they can't go forward into what is promised and what they really want and really need. One thing I do, Paul says. One thing I do. The truth is there's no life in the sins of the past. Jesus calls out to Lazarus, unbind him from the death he's wrapped in from before and let him go. I will remember their sins no more and I will forgive their iniquity. That's how it will be. We are being invited by the prophetic word to participate in such a vision, in such a promise, in such a new life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Today, now let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley Beach, our Archbishop, and Mark Lawrence, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joe, our president the members of Congress, the justices of the Supreme Court, and all state and local authorities. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those on our prayer list, Margie Boykin, the Cantrell family, Barbara Forney, the Green family, Tracy Harper, the Haviland family, Ellen and Gary Pruitt, the Wilms family, those with job loss or reduction in hours and pay, our expectant mothers, Liz Hirschman, Sean Haviland Huthwit, Mabry Osborne, our homebound, Francis Cheatham, Pat McCullough, Louise Perry, Becky Tootin, Grace Young, our deployed military, Brian Boyer, Michael Dean. Please pray for all men and women serving in the military and for Bishop Campici and the Diocese of Marzabet, Kenya, especially our tree church partners in game, Elibor, Makona, Goro Rukase, and Bedese and for our Haitian partners in the Church of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to our local ministry partner, East Cooper Meals on Wheels, as they minister to our neighbors who deal with the basic necessity of putting food on their tables. Thank you, Lord, for our Christ Church members who faithfully prepared and packaged meals for the Meals on Wheels weekend ministry prior to the pandemic, and for those who can currently deliver meals to recipients' homes. 
Lord, we ask that you continue to bless this program and in your time provide additional opportunities for Christ Church members to participate in this ministry. We pray that your spirit will continue to stir up within all of us the passion to embody the gospel and serve others, all for your glory. Let us pray together. Almighty and most merciful God, and all other perils of our world, we flee to you for strength and protection. Deliver us, we beseech you, from all peril. We thank you. By prospering the means made use of for their care and cure, and grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, Christ Church kids, all right. Following the cross in, that's a good thing to learn. Follow the cross. Please be seated. Welcome everyone. Thank you for continuing to wear your mask and to space out end, middle, and end on the pews and every other pew. Um, I hope that in the coming months we'll be transitioning away from that. As soon as we can, we will. As much as we can, as soon as we can, as safely as we can. There are a lot of announcements and I won't uh, go through them all. They're in your back of your worship booklet, so please take that home. But let me uh, call to your attention that the Ultra flower, um, the flowers for the church for Easter. Uh, there's a form for that on the way out if you'd like to contribute toward the purchase of those flowers. Uh, we'd love for you to do so. Uh, those um, forms are due by March 28th, so we can go ahead and, and buy and plan and, and decorate for Easter. This Wednesday speaker is uh, Reverend Dr. John Barr, uh, who's an old friend of mine and a longtime priest of the church now and a wonderful teacher. Uh, he'll be in the parish hall from 6.30 to 7.30 on Wednesday. It's the last of our Epiphany Lenten speaker series this year. It's been a good series, and this is a good uh, way to end. I really didn't think about this until the 9 o'clock announcements. Um, he's um, going to teach from the Revelation to John. Uh, to say not only in answer to the question, how then shall we live, which has been our theme, uh, not only a present perspective, but a future perspective. So what is the hope and the promise that we're called towards? So that ties in nicely with the sermon today. So thank you, God. I appreciate you doing that. <laughs> the women's uh, new Bible study starts uh, on April 14th. So uh, that's at 1.30 in the afternoon. Please sign up for that if you're able and, and interested. Also, the Anglican Women's Annual Gathering is here at Christ Church on April 24th. So you, you need to sign up for that event also. There'll be a wonderful speaker for that. Uh, Holy Week and Easter registration for services is open, so let us know through the website or the office. I would say particularly for the Easter services, we've added an extra service. You know, um, Easter is a time when, like Christmas, people tend to come to church. And so I don't want you to get here thinking, well, all these other Sundays I, I forgot to register and, um, and just slipped in and it was all right. And you came on Easter Day. And, and we said, this service is full, it's closed. So I want you to go ahead and register now so that if the service becomes full, you can bump over to another service and make your plans accordingly. Please do register for our Holy Week and Easter services. Bellcroft is looking for um, uh, volunteers to make palm crosses this week, so give her a call in the office as Bellcroft and Palm Crosses. We are looking for volunteers to help with the technology team of the church. Uh, uh, 
uh, filming our services online as we're doing right now um, and that sort of thing. Uh, we've got Mallory Gum back there right now. She's waving at us. Uh, thank you, Mallory. Um, sometimes people uh, get inspired by what they hear in church and they say, you know, I would love to serve, but I can't teach Bible study, so I guess there's nothing for me to do. But that's not true. We have things for people like uh, those who are good at technology and cameras and stuff like that. We would love to increase our team that uh, monitors all that. And uh, please let us know if you're interested in that. Lastly, Summer Fun Week uh, uh, registration is open for members of the church. Because of COVID and the way we're going to do the Summer Fun Week this year, there are going to be less spaces than sometimes in years past. Um, so uh, we're holding that for the congregation, the registration. Uh, for a week or so, and then it's going to open up to the day school and then to the community. So now's the time to go ahead and get registered for Summer Fun Week, uh, which is the third week in June, I believe, this year, June 21 through 25. If anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? <laughs>
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. By your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. When the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Let us now receive the gifts of God for the people of God. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. On behalf of the church, this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen.
Christ.